What's going on, everyone? Welcome. This is the Warehouse Series. If you guys are brand new, I welcome you to the channel. So I got two topics I want to talk about. The first one I'm going to hit on real quick, and then the second topic I really want to spend some time on, and I hope you guys watch this video all the way through, and I would love for you guys to interact in the comment section on this video. Let me know in the comment section below if you agree, disagree, or if you see things that are changing at your warehouse and your local grocery stores as well. So before we get to that, guys, if you could do all this over here, I really appreciate it. If you are brand new, like I said, join Discord. That link is in the description below. It's free, guys, and it's a great community. All right, guys, so the first thing I'm going to talk about, um, just something for new selectors to keep in mind. I had someone, uh, and I, I apologize if I'm sniffling or uh, I'm, I'm telling you, seasons changing up here is not a good thing for me. Oh, my allergies act up. Anyhow, keep in mind... Now, someone left a comment on Discord the other day, and I get these comments personally messaged to me. Hey, I'm a new selector. Holy cow, can these people be rude in here? And I'm like, yeah, I, I've been calling warehousing the 13th grade ever since I started. Uh, someone left a comment saying I've only been here for a day or two. And like per someone told me, uh, you know, uh, don't be the result of us staying late. And man, that, it, it's just that's warehousing, guys. Uh, you know, I was a, I started at 19 years old and you could ask anybody that worked with me whenever I first started there. Man, was I a punk. I, I, was, I, I just fell into this high school atmosphere. I acted like I was in the 13th grade. I acted like I was still in school. I was not a mature person at 19, I'll tell you that right now. Uh, and then hopefully over time, I'm hoping people evolve into better people and better workers. Uh, but yeah, I was definitely a punk when I first started. So one thing about being in the 13th grade is that, like I just said, guys, that's what I got caught up in. It's the same type of atmosphere. Uh, you just bring that atmosphere for uh, atmosphere from 12th grade school, graduating on to your first job. And if it's warehousing, you just act the same. So when I first started, it was a lot of younger people uh, starting there. And they come in with that attitude, like, I'm probably not going to stay here. So I really don't care how I act. And I'm just going to blow some time away and make some money. The second thing, guys, it's unskilled labor work. So it's not like people are getting like six months a year of training to come do a job like this. You get three to five days of training and that's it. And you're on your own and you're off selecting. So the unskilled labor jobs, uh, you're going to get a lot of this type of atmosphere. And the next two things I want to talk about is college and unions. And one guy's college, be wary of, you know, I mean, when people go to college, they're spending tens of thousands of dollars. So obviously the atmosphere that they go to is going to be a lot more professional. And there's one thing I want you guys to know. If you're a new selector going to a union, boy, oh boy, do people with that seniority number think they're just so much better than you. All right. And that is uh, a thing that has always been at our workshop. And boy, do people think they're so much better than you. They could be two seniority numbers ahead of you, and they just think they are so much better than you. So be prepared to be looked down upon and act like, you know, I'm, you know I guys, I don't treat no one that way. I help everyone in my warehouse. I don't treat anybody that way. All right. I've been there for over 25 years, and I'll be damned if I'm going to treat someone like they're lower than me in their dirt because they're a lower seniority number. But you got a lot of people that do. All right, guys, like I said, I want to go over that real quick. Uh, just something for new uh, selectors to be wary of. Now let's talk on a serious subject, and that is automation. All right, automation, I've touched on this before. I've talked about automation in the past. And, you know, someone posted this video, and this is what brought it up. And I just want to let you guys know, please watch this video. I'll leave the uh, link in the description below. This is over in the UK, I believe it was. But, guys, AI has been around forever. All right? Artificial intelligence has been around for decades. Uh, we've had automation in our warehouse in the 80s. We had the high bays. We had the electodes that brought the pallets from the high bay over to us to uh, put into it. Guys, it's been around. It's just evolving a real rapid pace in the last 10 years. Uh, there's more companies out there now supplying this automation to warehouses, which is making it easier to get. Uh, so, But one thing I want you guys to do uh, go on YouTube and you search for uh, automation. You're going to see, uh, I think one of the first videos I've ever seen was Meyer, and that was almost 10 years ago. So, and that was impressive then. So now when you watch this video, just show, I mean, guys, so why is this a problem? Because it's not just your company. So let's say Kroger, I think they are opening one in Cleveland right now, fully picking automated warehouse. Well, guess what? Kroger does not need to just supply their local area with that. They could supply anybody with that. Uh, you know, when you have a, a warehouse that's picking 24 hours a day at rapid paces and building great pallets, no, like less damage, less a lot of things, guys, uh, you know, you're going to be able to supply a lot more stores. So they could just scoop up other stores and become that giant that they're already becoming. Now, them and Albertsons were supposed to merge, and I don't think it happened. 
And I don't know what's going on with that, if it's going to happen. So if you guys work at Kroger or Albertsons and you know anything about that, leave it in the comment section below. Uh, but it, it's a monopoly. That's what these companies are going to be. And that's what's taken over the United States is monopolies. And that's the only companies that are going to thrive, in my opinion. Uh, but yeah, watch this video. It's very impressive. Uh, but I've never seen Perishable or Frozen. Every time I watch a fully automated picking uh, video, it's all uh, dry goods. If you guys have seen Frozen or Perishable, please leave that link in the description, or I mean in the comment section below. I would love to see it. All right, guys, and that's, uh, you know, it's going to the grocery stores as well. I was in a Walmart, my local Walmart here, uh, three weeks ago, and the whole front of the store was just wiped out clean. It was just an empty floor. And I'm in there with my son, and I'm walking by, and a worker's walking past me, and I just giggled. I'm like, let me guess, uh, all self-checkouts, and he goes, yeah. You know, and he walked past me just with this smirk on his face, like, yeah. Uh, and then we went in there the other day, and it is. It's like 70% to 80% self-checkouts at Walmart now, my local Walmart, which is a giant Walmart. Uh, and then I feel, I feel for the older people because uh, a lot of older people were complaining about it. They didn't know how to work the machines. Uh, they, they're getting confused, like, especially if they had produce. Now you got to sit there and look up the produce numbers. So older people, uh, and guess what? That's going to happen. Older people are going to stop shopping. They're going to just start having their stuff delivered to their house or pick it up. Uh, that's going to become a more evolving thing, which it is. You go into a Walmart or even my local giant eagle, the company I work for, and how many people you see bugging around the, the carts for pickup orders. Uh, and you're going to see a lot more of that because these old people do not want to go in there and ring up their own stuff. I guarantee it. So uh, even people and even people my age don't want to do it. So you're going to have that as a rapid growing thing is uh, groceries being delivered to home and people picking up their groceries is going to be growing big time in the next few years. So with that being said, when it comes to warehousing, in my opinion, if you're not working for one of the giants, you're probably going to be out of the job in the future, uh, in my opinion. Uh, smaller companies are having a really hard time trying to compete with all the competition out there. So, and that's where I want to, you know, guys, remember, re let me know about Kroger and Albertsons in the comment section below. I know we got a lot of people that work for Kroger and Albertsons in my Discord. Uh, so I want to talk about my company. And guys, I hope you continue to watch what your, uh, my video, even though you don't work for Giant Eagle. And I think it's because it's important because if you work for a smaller company, I want to know if this is happening at your place as well. So I want to talk about my work and I hope and you guys, if you work at a smaller company. All right. So about two years ago, I told the people at our work, uh, if you don't see the writing on the wall, uh, then I don't know what's going on with you. You know, if you've been at my job for any length of time, you could see that we are uh, not a thriving company like we used to back in the day. Back in the day, we had Food Land that was, I don't even know if that was nationwide, but we had Food Land and Shop and Save. That was the only two stores that we really had to compete with. Uh, Food Land's gone. Uh, now we got a few Shop and Saves left, not many uh, out there. Now we got uh, Aldi, we got Dollar General's probably every five miles, and you have Walmart, and then Target's have been redoing all their stores with groceries. So our Giant Eagle, we're down to, a, I think, 196 stores. And I was at a meeting at our place, and the only thing that they said was really keeping us thriving was geckos and market districts and the pharmacy. Those are the three things that keep Giant Eagle afloat. And I just think uh, we are struggling as a grocery store uh, company to compete with everybody else that can get their groceries for a lot cheaper. It's just the nature of the beast, all right? So Walmart, Aldi, all these people can order in major bulk where we can't do that. We used to order a major bulk and try to keep our groceries down, but what we ended up doing was just throwing everything away in the warehouse that wasn't selling. Uh, so when we tried to order things in bulk at a cheaper price, it just wasn't working out because we were throwing more product away, fresh foods wise. We were throwing more product away, and uh, it just we were losing money on that aspect. Yeah, everyone says it's a write off, but the last thing you want to do is start throwing food away. Uh, so it's we have to order in smaller bulk now, which is more money. And that's when you buy anything, guys. You you buy 10 shirts. Um, when you get your T-shirts made, uh, you buy 10 shirts, it's $20 a shirt. If you buy 100 shirts, it's, you know what I mean, it's 8 bucks a shirt. It's the same thing as with groceries. The more you buy, the cheaper it's going to be. So obviously, the bigger companies that I just showed you, the Walmarts and all that stuff, they're the companies that are going to thrive in the future in this major, rapidly changing grocery business. So two years ago when I said that, I'm nuts. Now people are starting to say, oh, you're making sense. Okay, I see what you're saying because even though, uh, guys, and this goes for unions too. Back in the day, who the heck would have ever thought that we would have lose, lost our pension, all right? And the way our union is now with the people that get this stuff, like what we have as senior guys, the bottom guys are never gonna see that. 
because they're designing our company for you not to stay. They're designing our company because they want that revolving door to be a one to two year window and they want you out so they could just keep rotating that in because guess what? Since the new people are not gonna get what we got, when we leave, they're saving money. They're gonna start saving money and they're never gonna replace us with the, with you know the unlimited healthcare and all that stuff that we have. They're never gonna replace us. So they know this. And but and I do I fault our company? I do not. They I, and everyone at our work, and, and this is where I think people are just so blinded by John Eagle being a company here. I, like it's just humongous because everywhere you drive around here, you see a John Eagle. Well, it's because that's where they're located. All right, go outside of the area, and you're going to start seeing food lines and everything else. You know, you're not going to see. Uh, and over in Ohio, we compete with Kroger. Who the hell can compete with Kroger with 196 stores? And I think about 60 percent of our stores in Ohio. We can't do it. Uh, so I really just think that uh, our company is uh, on a downward. Tr uh, it's going down, you know, slowly. Uh, our warehousing, uh, the uh, inventory in our warehouse is like empty in our dry goods. We like our rack reserves are empty. I, I've been there 25 years, guys. I have never seen our reserves like this. Uh, our case counts are down. Uh, come on. It's like, guys, if you work for me and you're watching this video, please don't be blind to this. And I, you know, I, it's just, I don't know how you don't, uh, don't see this. And if you are in a small company, a uh, small warehousing company that delivers just to a couple hundred stores, let me know in the comment section below. Do you guys see this at your warehouse too, where there's just rapid changes coming? Uh, they're cutting our off the clock jobs. They're making us do more work at our job. Uh, and it's just going to keep going that direction. And they're already talking about doing that in March as well. They are constantly going to get us to do more work uh, because they can get bodies to stay there. And they know this. Uh, so our company is going to be rapidly changing very quickly uh, in the next year or two. Uh, we got a contract in two years from from this September 20th, and I guarantee it's not going to be a good one. It is not going to be a good contract. Uh, and, and we usually get a three to five year contract. This may be a year or two. I, I don't think it's going to be anything spectacular. Uh, I truly believe that our company is probably going to sell or more rapid changes are going to be coming to our company. Uh, and I, I would love for you guys that work in small warehousing companies, grocery wise, to chime in in the comment section below and let me know if it's the same. A uh, little rant going on here. Uh, my advice is utilize your time. If you are watching this video and you work for my company, start paying off your debt. Because as far as I'm concerned at our job, you are only guaranteed our contract years. And right now you are only guaranteed two more years from September 20th this year to two years. So, and my advice to you is to stop spending, stop freaking going out on these vacations and everything and start paying your debts off. Uh, my goal, which I'm gonna be real soon, is everything but a mortgage, all right? We're getting, or everything but the mortgage, I wish it was Everything down to a mortgage is where I'm gonna be. And uh, so I'm gonna be comfortable. So. Uh, and I really don't care where I work after this because we are not going to be uh, drowning in debt. So that's my rant for today. Uh, guys, I even lit up my face for this a little bit. <laughs> I've been staring at the camera. I didn't realize that my face was so bright. But a little rant to end this video on. Uh, let me know what you guys think. I'll see you guys later. Have a great day.